All right. Uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking recently over this past week, and I'm actually on my way to work right now. Uh, and last for me, last Saturday was when the Gallo Fall teams were released and talked about, and the rules were went live. And some of the reactions and, and opinions, and opinions are fine. Everybody can have an opinion. That's totally cool. But some of the reactions and I'm going to say some outrage has just kind of really caught me off guard. And I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think that the, uh, the Felgor Ravagers are the boogeyman that everybody thinks they are. Ever since the Gallo Fall teams were announced, I have been super duper excited for uh, the Felgor Ravagers. I'm just going to call them Beastmen from now on. Um, but I've been super pumped since they announced it. And I, I've heard the rumor for about a year beforehand. So once it finally came out, I was like on top of the world. And I even started kit bashing as soon as I heard my own Skaven team, which I'll, I will show you now. I'm sort of working on minutes before work starts here. Weird and wacky and everything that I love and Warhammer. I'm using Zangors as the base for bodies and maybe some blood letters too. And then Skaven heads, Skaven bits, and some green stuff. You know, not, nothing crazy, but fun and weird. And I like fun and weird. But something's kind of been bothering me ever since uh, the rules were released on Saturday and sort of into, into the world and people can think about it and talk about it. And I'm just having trouble getting it out of my head. And what that thing is, is that I don't think I have seen this level of negativity community, you know, in general in the community over a box or a kill team, maybe ever. People saying, you know, crying that they're broken, that they are horrible for the game, um, that they're just, it's nuts, that, you know, this is a fail, this is a horrible failure. And even like, right, everybody's allowed to have opinions, right? Opinions are fine. Everybody can have an opinion. Um, but I think what starts to get dangerous is when you get into outrage territory. And so we have people day one saying, people in the community, people with voices in the community saying that this is horrible, this is the most broken thing, uh, and that it's you know just garbage for the game. And worse than that, even at the, at the extreme here, calling for people to be fired. Let's get this out of the way, right? They look very strong. <laughs> Frenzy, their ability, where they don't die when you kill them, they stay alive until your next activation. That is very strong right super duper strong that is you know breaks a core mechanic of the game which we'll get to later which is not a unique thing to break a core mechanic of the game it is very strong and i think some things maybe need to be toned back some things need to be clarified at the bare at the just the, the bare minimum there needs to be a clarification on how seek and destroy attack ops work against this team um do you get it when you frenzy them do you get it when they are incapacitated what happens if they just go incapacitated without at the end of their next activation? Like, how do you score things? That's a problem. It needs to be fixed. Guess what? I'm pretty hopeful. I think the kill team uh, department, however they function, has done a really good job at that. And I'm, I'm sure that will be clarified. And maybe the second one that off the top of my head immediately that I can think of um, that I've also seen from some other folks, and I think they're right, is that they probably shouldn't count towards objectives when they're frenzied. I don't think they should do that because you can deny... You could even, you know, just that that gets to be a little bit problematic. Um, and I think that's a little bit too strong where, you know, I think even thematically, if you're frenzied, you're not thinking about, I have to hold this objective. You're thinking about who can I go punch in the face before I die? And so those those are things that need to be changed. In, in my opinion, I agree. Some tweaks are probably needed. Hair change, outfit change. Uh, it is now the next day. Let's Let's keep going. So they break a core mechanic of the game being death. Normally, when you die, you die. But when these guys die, they get frenzied instead and get to do something and then they will die. Now, a lot of teams, it's very strong, right? It may be one of the stronger ones, but a lot of teams break a core mechanic of the game to give that team some flavor or some identity, you know, when compared to other teams in the game. Harlequins, right? Just they fly. They ignore the core movement mechanic of the game that you can't move over things, you can't move over people without you know paying attacks or uh, paying a troll toll or just not being able to do it uh, at all. Kasserkin, Novitiates, um, and Blooded, like to a lesser degree, have dice manipulation. Everybody else has to roll dice, 
Not these guys, they just auto retain or turn something into a success. And even legionaries and uh, uh, intercession, right? Double shooting. That is something that, that teams don't have access to because a core mechanic of the game is that you can only perform one action uh, or you can perform one action one time. You can't double move, you can't double dash, um, but, but these teams get to double shoot. So this is breaking core mechanics of the game to give them flavor, to, to give them an edge up in certain areas. Uh, and so we have seen this before. This is not the first time we've seen this kind of thing. I just wanna remind people of that. Some teams get free dashes. Some teams get free mission actions, right? There are just, these things give these teams uh, flavor and, and you know, bonuses in one area, minuses in another. But the problem I see is the just incredible outrage and the reactionary uh, reactionaryism, the crazy reactions uh, to this team have just been so nuts and so negative. Um, and I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's healthy, guys. I don't think it's healthy as a community for us to fly off the handle. Uh, you know, when when this when this stuff comes out. And like I said, some people, like in the very extremes, are calling for people's jobs to be uh, you looked at, or for calling for people to be fired. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy. Uh, I want you to know that that's crazy. If you don't think it's crazy, please think about it. That is crazy. Um, and so I just don't think I, I don't think it's healthy for us, man. Kill Team and Warhammer and War Gaming as a whole, uh, but specifically Warhammer. I just love it, man. I love the world. I love the models. I love the stuff. Uh, like more importantly, I love. Like all the friends, the buddies that I now have that I didn't have, like all over the world. Um, like it's just, it's awesome. Like I love it. This is my hobby. And I come to this hobby to enjoy it. Like at the end of the day, we're all adults or almost adults or not adults, but most of us are adults. Uh, like, dude, I'm a whole dad. I'm a whole husband. I got a wife. And I got kids. I got a job. And I, I spend my free time when I can painting little toys and playing with little toys and rolling dice. And I think it's fun. I do it because it's fun. I don't do, like, real life has enough things in it to stress me out and enough things in it to make me upset. And there are things going on in the world that genuinely should make you upset. I come to my hobby to have a good time. And I just, I'm not going to give this game, this hobby, permission to, uh, to get that sort of reaction out of me. And I, th I think I've said this before on the channel, but I think some people look at this hobby as, man, this, this is what, I love this so much. Don't mess it up. I will get angry and freak out if you mess it up. And I, I understand that, but I think you will have a better time in this hobby. And I think you will have a better life as a whole. And I'm not trying to, to over-exaggerate. If you allow your hobby to be a hobby and enjoy it and you not give it the permission uh, to upset you, depress you, freak you out. And when you when you sort of look at it that way, it's all gravy, man. It's all gravy. And especially with a game like Kill Team that is so well supported uh, and well balanced as a whole. If there's a problem, you know, they'll fix it. They've shown us that. So I think, man, if you just take a deep breath and look at your hobby as a hobby and enjoy it like that, man, I think you're gonna have a better time. And I want that for you. I want everyone to have a better time with their hobby. That's just a good thing for all of us. And when people in the community, especially people with voices in the community, uh, like have a very strong opinion on something, which is fine, like it would be, I mean, like everybody's allowed to have an opinion. Like that'd be crazy to say that you can't have an opinion or you, we can't agree, disagree on something like this goofy, a, a fun game, right? Like we don't have opinions. I think you just have to be careful to take a step back. And when people are really passionate about things, because I think some people, especially nerds, especially nerds, think that getting mad over something like this is cool. Especially nerds think that getting mad over their IP being changed or whatever is cool. Like, oh, I can't believe what they did to this fake character that I love so much. Like, they, I think they think it's cool to get mad about it. And maybe this is my opinion, but I just don't think it's cool. So uh, I think that, you know, it's just important to take a step back and look at things for yourself and go, all right, man, this person feels this type of way, uh, which is valid. What are other people saying? What are other people 
you know, who, who know this game really well, what are they saying? What are their reactions to this? And uh, I think that you can, apply, you can apply that to every, almost every area in life and maybe every hobby you have. Um, this is my two cents. Let's, let's, get, let's get back to the Goatman. Let's get back uh, to the Beastie Boys. Oh, Beastie Boys. That's, I think I'm just going to call them from that from now on. Let's get back to the Beastie Boys. How are elites going to deal with them? Well, if you're Intercession or Legionary or a double shooting team, you'll play around it. And you, let's say you shoot one. Let's say you get a shot off on turn one. Does, don't kill it. That's also possibly a good strategy. Get it down to low health. Then if it fights you in its own activation, you'll kill it. And then boom, dead goat. Everybody lives. Except for the goat. You live and you have a good time. Uh, or intercession. Shoot, charge, crit. Shoot, charge. Uh, you know, two melee hits. And then it's dice. Maybe it won't work. But that's a pretty valid strategy. How are vet guard or pathfinder is going to deal with it or blooded like man i think blooded are in a good place as they always are you shoot it down you cut it down from range and then you have one of your little losers charge in and you pray for a crit or you uh you know auto retain a crit or you just pray and roll some dice and hope you get it and maybe you don't but it's a game uh right so there are ways to kill a goat in a single activation there are ways to play around it there are ways to screen things out um, I think, uh, I just think there's counterplay. Like when you roll up to a table and Geller Pox is on the other side, you know, okay, I'm gonna have to change some things. I'm gonna have to do things a little bit differently. When you see intercession on the other side of the table, you go, okay, I'm gonna have to change my game plan a little bit. You tailor how you play and the game plan to the team on the other side, even to the player on the other side, right? And so that's just kind of what this game is, is that new teams add different fun challenges, fun elements, um, and if something's too strong, it'll get fixed. That's just where we're at. But you play differently against every team, right? Like Geller Pox, like nobody's like psyched in a tournament to, to see Geller Pox on the other side, unless maybe you just crack the code, right? And so um, you play differently against different teams. And this team, with the exception of maybe being a little overtuned, uh, I think is no different. And I'm not trying to be toxically positive. That was a comment the other day, toxic positivity uh, on, on the channel, which I actually, I think I kind of love that. Um, and I just think, number one, I think as a community, it's just not good for us to outrage like that over something like this. I just don't think it's good for anybody. I, I, I've personally known people who get, just, who, you know, have a, an interesting relationship with a hobby and where they're so invested and they will, they will actually get depressed, right? Not joking about being depressed about it, but will actually get depressed or sad or feel bummed about something hobby related. Um, Cause people get invested. And uh, like I've seen that before. I, I don't think it's good for, I don't want that for people, right? I don't want that for, for my friends, for, for you guys on the internet. I, I don't think you should, uh, you know, a hobby should like, like this should actually negatively affect you in your life, in your real life. I, don't, I just don't think that's good for us. And so, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm thinking, and here's what I'm saying. I'm saying, uh, I just don't think something like this, a game is worth being toxic or freaking out about, uh, outrage. I just don't think it's worth it. We can disagree. That's fine. Um, and I think, I think Felgor Ravagers, I think are probably overtuned, right? I think they can need some, a few little tweaks. I don't think that they are going to auto win every tournament. I think they're going to be very strong in some situations. And they will, as I've said a couple times, I think they need tuning back. But I don't think that they are going to be the insane boogeyman uh, everywhere. I think, and people probably won't get this far. They'll probably comment before it. But I think in like, you know, they'll be probably be very pub stompy. Like against against your buddy Jerry, right? Who's, who plays uh, Compendium, you know, Assault Intercessors on the weekend. Like you're probably going to eat his lunch. Um, but there are teams like Geller Pox is that way, right? So there are a lot of teams that, that function that way. And uh, it's a strong melee team. I think they're very cool. I think they're very flavorful. I'm excited to play them. Um, and then I will have an even better uh, formed, m much more well-formed opinion on them after I actually put them on the table and roll some dice. Whoa, think about that. Um, I'm sorry, I was a little sarcastic. But anyways, guys, um, I'm pumped for this team. I think I'm done talking. Uh, I hope you are pumped for this box. I think it's a very good box, uh, all things considered. Leagues of Votan in the game, oh, it's so healthy, it's so good, but where are the nids? Um, uh, the Beastman I think is very fun. Uh, I, I'm excited, is this season coming to a close and the next box coming? Uh, maybe I am just toxically positive, but life is heavy enough, guys, that you should enjoy your hobby and not let it 
depress you or make you sad or make you bummed. Let's just look at things a little differently and learn to enjoy it. That is my hope for you, my good friends on the internet. Uh, that's gonna do it, guys. That's all I got. That's all I got. How long are we going? Oof. Too long. This is my love letter. Uh, that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing and being so nice and cool on the internet. There's a Battle Brothers Discord if you wanna check that out. Uh, there's a Patreon as like a, a tip jar if you wanna check that out. Uh, there is the Kill Team Casuals podcast. Uh, me, Reese, and Russ. Um, three, <laughs> three of the leading voices in Kill Team all in one place <laughs> that you can check out. Um, uh, and so it's a good time. It's a good time to be in the hobby. Love it, live it, enjoy it. Uh, have a good time with it. Don't be bummed about the hobby. Be bummed about other things in your life that are worthy of being bummed over. Don't be bummed over this. Yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Uh, time to go to work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.